This TV Mass is brought to you live by Philippine Long Distance Telephone SME Nation. Success through technology with PLDT SME Nation. This morning we gather as one big family. We shall start this Mass in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we pause for a few moments and call to mind our sins. We approach the Lord for He is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you are Emmanuel, the God with us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. With Mary, our mother, let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. The Lord appears to Moses in the burning bush and reveals himself as the God of patriarchs the God who is not to be compared with other gods, the God who is faithful and merciful. The first reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw, when the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, he answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, 
the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt, and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians, and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, But when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, What is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, This is what you should tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This holy name, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all. and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known His way deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful, merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is His kindness toward those who fear Him. The Lord is kind and merciful. always focuses on the risen Christ, finds prefigurations in the signs and events of God's deliverance of Israel. That tragic things happen in Israel is a warning to Christians that God's interventions on their behalf must not remain fruitless. 
the second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffer death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. From the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There was once a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, found none. He said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Una po muna, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Magandang umaga po. Good morning. Sana na naging maginhawang inyong pagdating dito sa mga nanonood sa TV. Sana naging maganda ang gising nyo kanina. Ikatlong linggo ng kwaresma. 
unang linggo ng Marso. Andito na raw ang tag-init. March is also Fire Prevention Month. Kamakailan lang na balita, nagkaroon ng sunog sa Quezon City at may namatay isa. Sa dinami-dami ng pwedeng maging biktima, siya pa. A nine-year-old girl. Bakit kaya? Alam nyo yung mga estudyante ng high school sa Bulacan na nag-field trip doon sa Tanay. Aksidente, umandarang bus, naiwan ng driver, tuloy-tuloy. Hagip ang dalawang estudyanteng bata, nagulungan daw, ipit, pipi, patay. Bakit sila pa? Kalilibing lang kahapon ng isang pare, si Father Jerry Tapiador. Profesor namin sa Sacred Scriptures, kaya malaki ang utang na loob namin sa kanya. 54 years old pa lang. The youngest in his batch. He would have turned 55 on March 28. Sandali na lang, ang lapit-lapit na ng birthday niya. 14 years old, nakagraduate na ng high school. Talino. 23 years old, naordinahan ng pare. Pinatayo yung St. Peter's Shrine dun sa Commonwealth. Chaplain sa maraming pilgrimage sa Holy Land. 27 years, nagturo sa iba't ibang mga seminaryo. He suffered a massive stroke. Patay. Sayang naman. Bakit siya pa? Si Sister Lina, isang lektor sa dati kong parokya doon sa Kainta, biuda na, meron siyang tatlong anak na lalaki. Kahapon lang nabalitaan ko kung sino pa yung walang asawa, bata pa, doktor pa, nakihirapan para maging doktor, yun sana ang mag-aalaga sa kanya, hinold up, binaril, patay. Kadalasan, mga anak ang naglilibing sa magulang. Ang bigat siguro kapag ina ang maglilibing sa anak. Hindi lang natin minsan naririnig yung tanong, yung taghoy, bakit ganun? Masama ba akong tao para parusahan ako ng Diyos ng ganito? Marami naman masasamang tao dyan ah. Mga magnanakaw, mga politikong buwakaw, mandaraya, kriminal, adik. Pero bakit ako? Bakit sa, kay- sa akin kailangan mangyari ang lahat ng ito? Anong dapat kong gawin para walang masamang mangyari sa akin? Gusto ko step by step. Lahat dapat maliwanag. Kailangan kong malaman ang dahilan. Kay- kayang sakupin ng utak ko ang misteryo ng kasamaan sa mundo. Dapat may masisisi tayo at mapagbubunto na ng bintang. Siya ang may kasalanan. Nagkakanser yan sa atay dahil lasenggo, manginginom. Ayan, nabarel kasi basagulero. Nagka-AIDS kasi bakla. Cause and effect lang yan. Life is neat and clear, black and white, logical, empirical, predictable. We detest suffering, pain, and sickness, assuming that they are only for bad people. Punishment for sinful people. They get what they deserve. Buti nga sa kanila. They are not for people like us. Because we are God-fearing. Because we serve in church. We go to Mass regularly. Nagbibigay ng sandaang piso sa balukay. Dapat reward na yan sa atin na walang kamalasang mangyayari sa atin. 
dahil mabuti akong tao. Kaya dapat lang mabuti ang Diyos sa akin. Dahil sa akin. Kasi ang Diyos, wala naman niya ibang ginagawa kundi bantayan lang ang ating mga kasalanan. Binibilang niya lahat yan sa isang malaking libro. At oras na mas marami ang kasalanan mo kaysa kabutihang ginawa mo, lagut ka, parurusahan ka, bad things will happen to you. Itatapon ka sa impyerno. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Ganun lang kasimple. Kaya hindi ko maintindihan kung bakit naghihirap ang mga mabubuti. The suffering of the innocent. Why do bad things happen to good people? At bakit parang sinuswerte pa yung mga hinayupak na yan? Unfair ang Diyos. May favoritism ang Diyos. Bakit niya hinahayaan lang? Baka nga wala talagang Diyos. Baka nga gawa-gawa natin ang Diyos. Mahirap isipin, pag ninilayan pa, magbabago pa ng buhay, kaya huwag na lang. Wala na lang Diyos. Pagkakahon sa Diyos sa ating mabababaw na konsepto. Tapos, bubulabugin lang ng mga pagbasa ang malilinaw nating konsepto tungkol sa Diyos. Unang pagbasa, sinabi ng Panginoon kay Moises, Nakita ko ang labis na paghihirap ng aking bayan. Alam ko ang hirap na kanilang tinitiis at narinig ko ang kanilang daing. Sa lumang tipan, naalala ko, turo rin na Father Jerry Tapiador, kapag sinabing, alam ko, I know well their suffering, hindi lang yun basta't kaalaman sa utak, kundi dama ko hanggang kaibutura ng aking puso. Diyos na hindi manhid. Diyos na nahihirapan din habang naghihirap ang kanyang bayan. Hindi mapakali, hindi mapalagay. Kaya bumaba ako upang sila'y iligtas at ihatid sa lupaing mayaman at sagana sa lahat ng bagay. Gagawin mo yan, Panginoon? Kahit alam mong magrereklamo lang yan ang magrereklamo, reklamo lang reklamo sa disyerto, at gagawa pa yan ang Diyos Josan, the golden calf, para sambahin, bakit hindi mo pabayaan na lang sila? Pabayaan mo sa kanilang paghihirap, mga walang utang na loob. Paano mong ipapaliwanag ang kabutihang loob mo sa mga taong iyan? They don't deserve it. Anong sasabihin sa kanila? At sagot ng Diyos, sabihin mo, I am who I am. Ako ito. Ako'y si ako nga. Hindi kayang sakupin ng inyong mga salita at ng inyong isipan. Mga kapatid, kapag nakapagsimba kayo kahapon, first Saturday, maririnig, narinig ninyo ang ibanghelyo tungkol sa talinhaga ng alibughang anak. The parable of the prodigal son. But really, it is the story of the prodigal father, lavish and generous in his mercy. Akala mo, yung anak lang na lapastangan ang naghihirap, yun pala, pati yung ama, nagbabantay sa may bintana. Hindi mapalagay hanggat hindi bumabalik ang anak kahit ito'y nagkasala sa kanya. Patatawarin, yayakapin, ipagtatanggol ang anak sa sino mang mananakit dito, kaya tumakbo pa yung ama patungo doon sa anak. At kung nakaligtaan yung magsimba kahapon, 
yun uli ang magiging ebanghelyo natin sa darating na linggo. The fourth Sunday of Lent. The parable of the prodigal son. The story of God's mercy. Paulit-ulit. Para hindi natin kalilimutan kung sino ang Diyos natin. Sa Ibanghelyo ngayon, andun yung tagapangalaga ng punong hindi namumunga. Huwag na muna nating putulin sa taong ito. Huhukayin ko pa yung paligot. Palibot. Lalagyan ko pa ng pataba. Gagawin ko ang lahat para mamunga. Dahil hindi mapagparusa lang ang Diyos. Hindi siya atat na parusahan at pahirapan tayo. Hindi siya manhid sa ating paghihirap. God is not just a God of justice, period. He is a God of mercy and compassion. Responsorial Psalm, the Lord is kind and merciful. How do we value this mercy? How do we respond to this mercy? Buhay pa tayo ngayon. Nakakahinga. Nakapagsisimba sa awa ng Diyos. Salamat sa Diyos. Hindi dahil tayo mabuti at banal kaysa ibang tao. Kundi dahil siya'y mabuti at mapagmahal. Binibigyan pa tayo ng pagkakataong magbalik loob sa Kanya at magbagong buhay. Amen. In response to God's mercy, we will stand and profess that we are Christians. I believe in God, the Father, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. God is patient and aware of our weaknesses and miseries. Let us pray that He may help us bear the good fruits of conversion and renewal of life. Let our response be, Lord, give strength to your people. Lord, give strength to your people. that the Church may always work for reforms within herself, aware that she is a community of people always in need of repentance. We pray, Lord, give strength to your people, that instead of looking upon the miseries of others as punishment of God, we may open our hearts and hands to them, ready to share with them what we have. We pray, Lord, give strength to your people, that the uncertainties of the times and signs of life's fragility may draw us to the love and compassion of God. We pray, Lord, give strength to your people, that the Holy Spirit 
may steer us to bear fruits of repentance, justice, and love, which the Lord expects from us. We pray, Lord, give strength to your people, that the Lord may protect all those who travel today, those who do delicate jobs, those who work for peace and order, and all those we love and care for. We pray, Lord, give strength to your people. We pray in a special way for our sick, for the sick, especially Dr. Butch Liban and Bobby Chin, and for the repose of the souls of our dearly departed, especially Raymond Claridad. Father, hear our prayers. Give us strength to be faithful to our Lenten observance of more intense prayer and more willing service to our brothers and sisters. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing while the gifts are presented to the altar. Pray, brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Luis Antonio, our Archbishop, all the clergy, and all of us gathered here before you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. At this point, we remember all our dearly departed and the souls in purgatory. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our Mother, Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, not on our many sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Kapayapaan. Behold the Lamb of God, the God of mercy. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For those of you who are unable to receive Holy Communion, especially our brothers and sisters who are joining us in this TV Healing Mass, we invite you to pray with us this prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will be seated. We will have our second collection for the Alay Kapwa Sunday as instructed by His Eminence, Cardinal Tagle. Second collection, just some announcements. The Acts Catholic Prayer Community invites you for our prayer meeting every Wednesday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Eucharistic Chapel of SM Megamall. We have scripture studies and faith services, talks. This coming Wednesday, we have our first Wednesday healing mass. And you are also invited to the Lenten Recollection, Faith in Jesus, the God Who Saves, this coming Holy Wednesday, March 27, 2013, at SM Mega Mall Halls. We shall now stand for the final blessing. Okay. Healing prayer. Lord God, mighty healer, loving Father, you are Emmanuel, the God with us, the God for us. You who hear the cry of your people, you know well our suffering and the crosses we bear. To you, no tear, no cry, no sigh goes unnoticed. No prayer is ever unheeded. We marvel at what you do for our salvation. We come before you in faith and humility. We prostrate ourselves before your mercy, your heart aflame with mercy and compassion. Do not treat us as our sins deserve. Touch our mind, our heart, our spirit, our body, our whole being with your healing power. Make us aware of your saving, loving action. Your love that is greater than we can ever imagine. Your love infinitely greater than all the evil and the suffering of the world. Your love that no sickness, no pain can ever take away. Let us be bearers of this mercy and this healing. And give us the strength to pray. Your will be done. Amen. The 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty and merciful God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Our mission begins. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.